we're doing another video on what to look for when you're buying a Cougar. Today I'm going to focus on a 1967 XR7 Dan Gurney Special. I know I've already done a 67 XR7 video, but we focused on what a tacky one looks like last time. So if you are like with the federal government and you're on a task force for spotting counterfeiters and counterfeit money, they don't give you a stack of fake counterfeits to study all day. They give you the real deal. So if you're looking for a super clean original car out there, you got to know what to look for. And I think this is the one. This is, this is the car we would have loved to land in 1976 on a used car lot with 100,000 miles. Uh, it's unrestored, two owner. And what's cool is what I'm finding, when I, got back, when I got in this business 30 years ago, I was buying lots of cars from original owners you know, senior citizens, older people, you know, with 100,000, with 70,000 miles. Well, those all got gobbled up, but now I'm getting round two. So the gentleman I purchased this from, you know, when he retired, he's like, I've always wanted a classic car and I want a Cougar, and he got one. And he enjoyed it for over 20 years. And now he's getting up in years, so we're seeing round two get on the market. And what's cool about the round two cars is they were pampered. He only drove this to the A&W Root Bear stand in fair weather. He says it never once got rained on in all the time he owned it in over 20 years. So I'm going to walk you from one end to the other on this car and we're going to show the what to look for on these 67 XR7s. Now first off I get people all the time going I got a Dan Gurney special how valuable is it? Well let's face it Dan Gurney was the name back then and Mercury really capitalized on that. But the 1967 or 68 Dan Gurney Special really didn't mean anything. It meant you got a sticker in the window, usually on the passenger side, and uglier than usual hubcaps. I won't call them ugly, but I prefer the standard caps or the wire caps or even the poverty caps over these. And also you sometimes got a chrome dress-up kit. So let's take a look under the hood and see what kind of chrome dress-up kit we got. I see that this does not have chrome valve covers and I have to be honest over the years the majority I've seen on Dan Gurney specials don't have chrome valve covers and I believe those to be the original. Uh, I do not see chrome air cleaner lids on small block Dan Gurney specials. What this may have had was a chrome a radiator cap and master cylinder cap. We don't know because obviously those have been changed probably multiple times over the years. We do however have this slide on closed emission chrome cap here and the patina tells me that's original. We stuck the decal on there. But this being a California car has the smog system. Years ago smog systems started becoming worth big money the big block ones and the Boss 302 ones. Several years ago, the 68 J-Code 302 ones became worth a lot of money. This setup, at this date, spring of 2019, not worth a lot of money. But if it follows suit with the other ones, it will be worth a lot of money soon. Reason being is, when these cars are $12,000 cars and $8,000 cars, their drivers, people don't care about the nitpicky stuff. But now that this car is close to a $30,000 car, I'll say high 20s, stuff like that matters. So if you've got an original California smog system for your 289, right now it might not be worth a ton of money, but don't throw it away. Don't give it away. Put it in a box, label it, keep all the clamps and all the little detail items. Because that, my friend, could be worth $3,000 in the future for all we know. This being a low mileage car, still after 50 years, has had multiple things replaced. So whereas it's not show quality, it's pretty nice. So let's point out some things that are original and some things that are replaced. First off, I see some alligator texture hoses here. Those are definitely original. This hose may have been changed though, it looks like. Uh, right here, this is a rare piece to still have this hose. We got the original markings on this California closed emission one year only hose. Notice the unique oil filler cap with the funky neck. Let's take off the air cleaner and see what we see below here.
we have a correct looking carburetor, but as we look at this tag, we see that it has a C9L carburetor. So this was probably bought at an auto parts store and it was a close enough carburetor, meaning it looks good and hooked up correctly, but probably not the correct CFM for this car. See the original ID tag here, not a yellow uh, top coil. Lots of hoses, as in heater hoses and clamps have been changed. This is not the original uh, vacuum advance, but that's almost impossible to find on a, on a driver is that. Okay, I want to show out this right here. This looks like the original crimped on clamp and hose, rock hard. Um, original white check valve, turned kind of an opaque color. Quite certain the booster's been changed because originally they would have been semi-gloss black and a lot of your rebuilders and auto parts store leave them in a natural finish, therefore you got the surface rust on it. This item is something I've placed here. When I got the car, it had a plastic unit and regular cheapo uh, hose clamps. I put an original unit on it. People throw these away because they leak here at the base, not realizing that all that ever goes wrong with these is the O-ring down there. So you just need to wire a wheel off the bottom areas, get a clean surface, lubricate the O-ring, put it in, and you're usually good to go for another 25 years. What's critical though is this vacuum port works. So you can actually unplug this and put it to your mouth and breathe in and feel whether it holds vacuum or not. So that, that piece right here is, is probably worth $150 or more uh, in perfect working order. Notice uh, this was never, nobody ever put the uh, ground strap on there. And it really should have it, so that's, that's, a, that's a factory omission in my opinion. So the new owner is gonna get one of my junkyard takeoffs in a little bag in the trunk. And they can decide whether they wanna drill that out and put it on, but it, it went right here. And uh, anyway, scratched the hood and helped your radio reception grounding out your hood better. Here we have an original uh, starter solenoid. Kind of shows that the car was well maintained. If it had a hard start situation for years, one would have wore one of these out. And you might be tempted to say, oh, I should get a fresh one that looks clean and everything. But man, I've, I've never found a reproduction that uh, worked as good as these originals. And the looks too, with the part number and all the markings. So that's a nice piece to have there. Let's look at the shroud. This shroud, let's see if we can get into that part number here. It does have the C7 part number on it. Uh, it has the plastic feel to it though, which would have been service replacement. The originals would have been more of a um, brownish looking uh, fiberglass horsehair finish, we call it. Fan looks correct. Uh, definitely not the correct uh, um, clutch though. The originals would have had a Ford part number here and would have been closed off in that area. Notice the radiator has been replaced. This does not have any FOMOCO markings. And again, it's kind of like your smog. For years, who cared on a small block? But times are changing. So if you have an old, ugly radiator, before you throw it away, at least sweat the top tank off that has the FOMOCO and the side plates that have the Ford part number on it before you throw it away. Those uh, are becoming valuable. People are requesting those and we sell them on our website. Notice on this car you have really clean shock towers. I doubt this car had any oversized tires ever on it or any hard use. What's, what's kind of surprising is uh, no uh, upper control arm squeaks of any kind. Just a nice feel all the way around. Notice this hood pad is showing its age. We're missing an ear here. It's a little torn here. These are unobtainium. So even though this isn't perfect, don't throw it away. The reproduction isn't even close to this. Until a, re a correct reproduction is made, hold on to these original dirty old hood blankets. Uh, Mustangs didn't have them, uh, so hard to come by. Let's uh, take a look at this grill here. Now, you seasoned Cougar owners will notice something very uh, uh, odd about this grill. It's laser straight. They're never laser straight. So my secret is this $6 little kit we sell that 
aligns them and keeps the pressure in the right places. This, of course, is not original. I don't care how original my cars are. I'm always putting these on because it's just, I hate crooked grills. While we're here, though, look at all the original FOMO Co. headlights. Very rare to see all four with the original FOMO Co. script. And nope, this one does not have all four. This one is blank, so it's a Wagner. This one, I'm going to say, is a service replacement. Notice it's um, black as opposed to the frosted look. So that was a later date headlight. So we got two of the four original headlights. But yeah, look at that grill. That's, that's something you'll rarely ever see is lines that straight. But while we're talking about grills, when you're inspecting, this piece really gets turned around a lot by those vacuum actuators. So look for hairline cracks in this area. It's hard to see in the backside and all areas of the grill until you, until you take it apart. But look real close here, there, and everywhere. Also, sight down this way. Sometimes you'll see a bow in this where it's hit something. This is a kind of a soft metal. So you want to see a super straight line right there. And I'm seeing just a little bit of a bow in that one. And I might be seeing a little bow in this. Not bad. When they do get hit here, they always crack right here. And also, I always look, notice the hollowed out areas here. This is unique to 67 and early 68s. Um, you can tell a car has been in a collision if one side is filled in here and one side is hollow. So I like to see a match, and all 67s would have been hollow like this. Here's your original buck tag. It's nice to see these here with the trim screw uh, still in place. The back side uh, has writing on it. Um, anyway, this buck tag, as we call them, was for the line workers to know where to punch the holes. So if the option required a hole punched in the body, it was put on here. So everything that, like vinyl top, you got to put holes for the trim in, um, you know, Everything having, like AC, you would have had to punch a hole here and here. So it's nice to see these tags still in place. Notice on this chrome here, you have a matte finish. Look at my reflection here in this. It's just kind of hazy. It's not, that's original. These, they weren't built building show cars from the factory. They weren't putting high polished triple plate on them. They're just quick buff and, and plate. And you'll notice here you have the original stamping marks. Feel how uneven that is and what looks like grind marks. You can definitely see the grind marks there. That's, that's the way they had them. And you only get original once because if this gets sent in to be replated, this will be all smooth and beautiful and shiny, which some people prefer. But there is a real movement to save these last survivors. You wouldn't believe how many people call me and say, I want to get rid of my show car. I'm tired of sitting in a lawn chair on Saturdays in a parking lot talking about my car. I want to go golfing. I want to go out. I want to drive my car, but I want a nice car. So this, these last few survivors like this are what everybody's grabbing these days. Okay, notice uh, this trim lines up pretty good here. I'm going to show you something that you probably are going to sneeze at, scoff at, I should say. This is factory, this washer here. Uh, they place these to get, if it didn't line up, that's what they did. They put these little washers here to bump this trim out so it lined up better. I don't know about this rubber stuff here. That, that looks a little excessive. I notice on this side, there's no shim. It looks like there might have been a little outline where the shim used to be. This car was repainted, so it is possible that uh, they didn't put the other one on. Let's see how it lines up here. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking the shim is missing on this side. Personally, what I like to do is, is just bend them. I take my hand and bend this down. I pull this up. You've got to be somewhat careful, but you can get quite an alignment on it from, from just monkeying with it. Okay, we got a telltale sign here of a replacement vinyl top. I doubt the factory would have left it swinging in the breeze like that. Also, uh, notice that the stainless steel keeper channel is not in place in here. Uh, most vinyl top installers ruin those on the way out and don't bother putting them back in. Very correct looking vinyl top. 
Uh, I recolored it myself. It was looking a little faded and with all the different uh, chemicals that had been on it over the years, you know, vinyl treatment, and I just decided to hit it with Sim Landau Black. And uh, looks overly new, but I like that stuff. Let's look at these hinges here. Uh, we got a stamped steel on the bottom, and excuse me, we got a cast steel at the bottom and stamped steel at the top. You might think that would be a mismatch, and maybe the car had been a collision. No, this is a late 6 7, and they transitioned to having stamped on the top, cast on the bottom sometime in late 6 7, and then early 6 8 were the same way, and then sometime in the 6 8 model year, they went stamp steel down here too. The, these uh, cast ones I feel hold up better, but when it's time to rebuild them, good luck. They're really tough to rebuild. Also, notice we're missing a seal here. There should be a seal, and unfortunately, that seal can only be replaced with this wing window taken out. So that was a faux pas on the bodyman's uh, uh, assembly process. I always like to look for pits in this area. This is a tough piece to re-chrome because when you send it to your plater, uh, it's hard for him to keep all the definition in here. So this one is near perfect. Uh, I see the slightest little dots right here on the inside. Of course, you won't see that when the door is closed, but it's worth noting. Okay, I always, when I'm looking at these cars, I feel for that. So this one, that's, that's getting there. I think that's the upper one. I think all you'd have to do is pop the bushings out and the pin out while the door is on the car, if you catch this one soon enough. Because look, it still lines up nicely, closed nice, nicely. Okay, if you're wondering if a car is original paint or not, I'll give you a few little clues. One is, this is too nice. Uh, look how the metallic paint is just so evenly applied. Originally, the technology and the materials they had, you'd see actual uh, differentiation in, in patterns when their gun was going like this. So, a little too perfect there, a little too glossy. Also notice that the uh, uh, pinstripe is too thick. In 6.7, 6, 6.8, 6, they were in fact uh, the same size, but they were very petite. So there's right away some indications this is not original paint. Here's something we rarely see, an original uh, windshield, car light, tinted and shaded, with no wiper burns or no big chips or cracks, and it doesn't seem to be delaminating around the edge. This was definitely a fair weather car. Had this car been in the Northwest or, or Colorado or Montana, you would see a lot more speckles on the window from cinders because we, we uh, gravel the roads, sand the roads out here. So nice to see this being from uh, California. Probably was never been driven in the snow. So all glass in this car is date code correct. And rarely will the date code be the same, or maybe never, on all the glass, but you'll see a bunching of numbers within uh, a couple of weeks, months in that area. If you see something way out, an outlier, then you know that that window was broken and replaced. But it's a big deal to find original glass with no scratches. If you were to buy this set reproduction, you'd pay over a thousand dollars. And that's without the car light marking. That's just Chinese glass with a generic marking. And there's always inconsistencies in the Chinese glass. So if Chinese glass is worth a thousand dollars, this is probably a $2,500 set of glass to somebody doing a high-end restoration without any scratches or chips or heavy water spots. I mean, this is show quality stuff. Here's another thing I like to see. This uh, stainless has never been restored. Uh, the stuff we sell is nice, but let's face it, it's over-restored. This has somewhat of a uh, satin finish, we'll call it. You can't clearly see your reflection. So nice to see 100% original trim with no dings. If it was Chinese, we'd have some sharper edges around in these areas, and it would have a, a little different hue. It was a cheaper stainless, maybe had a little more brown in it. I don't know if that's from brass or what, but just a cheaper stainless. So nice to see 100% perfect trim all the way. I don't think there's a single ding in any trim in this car. That's, that's a mark of a well-loved car. OK, 
Okay, when I bought this car, I immediately clued in that the deck molding was a little different sheen than the quarter trim molding. So I asked the buyer, do you think it's ever been a rear end collision? He said, no, I absolutely don't. And I think that's the original trim. Well, it was stainless. I replaced it with this restored aluminum piece. Uh, aluminum was correct for 67 and 8 and stainless steel was a service replacement starting in 69. So no big deal. The stainless ones actually hold up better, but I like my trim to match here and here. So I want to see aluminum all the way across. Again, so we have the matte finish bumpers. Uh, good alignment here is what we're looking for. What else? These stickers are always faded. I, of course, put a reproduction in there. You're never going to find an original that looks that nice. And for some reason, the rear Mercury emblems uh, show more fading than the front. I say it's because the exhaust comes right out here. So I replace that with a reproduction. That's why that looks unusually nice. Moving on to these speakers in the back. This has a factory AM8 track, but it wasn't, I don't think, uh, originally ordered with rear speakers. Somebody put them in and they were incorrect, old, uh, old looking ones. So I had these uh, reproductions and I put these in with reproduction speakers. Uh, originally, if it had rear speakers, there would have been a fader uh, button behind the right hand, fader switch behind the right hand button on the AM8 track. Yeah, that's an aftermarket gas cap. The original uh, would have been much different looking, stamped with the little finger tabs on it. Again, we see signs of a repaint. No, would not have had any uh, overspray on, like that from the factory. Nothing has been uh, detailed or restored back here. That would look great if these uh, lenses were taken out and restored. I always like to pop out these plastic panels here. And for the uh, for time, I've already removed the screws. The screws for these go right here and then up in the corner. And you pop these out and you can really take a look at this uh, uh, taillight panel. And they did not repaint in here, so it's nice to be able to see the original color of the paint. These original cardboard pieces uh, fit much better than the reproductions. Very hard to find even in this somewhat tired looking condition, but I'd rather have original tired looking than shiny new. Trunk mat obviously been replaced. Uh, you can tell it's a reproduction just because it's way too nice, but also if you ever really want to know, just reach back and feel the back of it. Notice how that's smooth. The originals were textured, of course had a stenciled on part number. When you're looking at these cars, don't forget to check deep down in these wells for rust. Get your head in there, get your fingers in there. That is normal to see um, uh, a lack of uh, quality, or, you know, the spray job wasn't, they just did a quickie on that. And I always, always, always look here for excessive rust. See, they weren't painted from the factory here. They went down a suspension system. And so this is the low point of the trunk. And so that's where water gathers if you ever get water in your trunk. And I assume that uh, the rear window on this one, uh, probably as dry as it looks, would leak if you left this car in the rain. Don't leave your classic cars in the rain. Sell it to somebody else if you don't have indoor storage. Car covers are just as bad as leaving them uncovered, in my opinion. I always say it's imperative to look at the underside of a car. They all look good on the top side. That's where people stand and polish. Nobody polishes the underside. They kind of ignore it. And this is where rust and other surprises, especially collision surprises, uh, reside. So I'm going to take you from one end to the other. The first thing I notice that these are arrow straight. This is very rare. This probably shows that the, the original owner took the car to the dealership because the guy in a driveway would jack up on these and, and mess them up. Tow trucks latch onto them to pull cars out of ditches. There's all reasons that these get messed up. And yes, those ugly welds are original. But uh, yeah, it doesn't look like these have ever been touched, which is just Great. Uh, original suspension here. Your service replacement uh, uh, lower control arms didn't have these little tabs. Call them jacking tabs. You'd never jack the car by this. But in your original alignment systems uh, to do a front end alignment, these were part of the process. So I'm seeing uh, riveted in ball joints, upper and lower. 
And the funny thing is, usually these cars around 100,000 miles need the front end rebuilt. And this one doesn't. It feels tight. And when I, when I wiggle things, you know, I'm seeing maybe a little slack here in this tie rod end. Not really. I do see that uh, the uh, idler arm has been replaced. You know, the originals wouldn't have had Zerks in them. It has a whole different look on that. So these rarely do you get more than 60,000 miles, so you'd expect that to be changed. Uh, but very original under here. Uh, like I say, riveted in ball joints. Notice we got the original articulated uh, struts here. They had this extra joint. It was supposed to give a little more comfort in your ride compared to a Mustang. They quickly discontinued that for 68. So here's the deal. You cannot buy replacements for these lower control arms. Uh, somebody like Mar Marcus Angel can rebuild them for you, but if uh, you want to change these with an off-the-counter product, uh, over-the-counter product, uh, you have to change these as well. So just keep that in mind. Very unique to 67. Let's see if we can see original part numbers on these uh, motor mounts. Regardless of what all the books say, there are no reproduction 67 small block motor mounts. You're stuck with originals unless you change to a 68 uh, frame stand. There's more information on our website with diagrams that show the difference between 67 and 68 on these. On the fuel pumps, to feel if they're original, we reach up and there's a little button on the top. And this one does have the button, so if it's not the original uh, fuel pump, it's, it's one that was replaced with an original Ford one off the shelf back in the day. Okay, on the steering box, I always like to reach up, make sure your exhaust isn't hot, and just move this uh, rag joint ever so little. And the tiniest movement up here, see how my hand is just barely moving that, should give you the tiniest movement down here. Uh, you'd be amazed what the smallest uh, slack in a steering box, trans steering box translates to when you're going down the road. So that's a tight box. Another indication that this has been a well-preserved, gently driven car. Let's go start looking at the floor pans. Um, when they repainted the car, they, they, the good news is they actually painted down here. A lot of repaints, they skipped this. But yeah, you see where their gun got the green paint all over down here. Got one little dent here from a, from a jack. Uh, but the speedometer cable isn't crushed or burnt. And notice this original has a protector right here when it goes into the transmission. So it's really neat to see an original untouched speedometer cable. Original exhaust. This is original Y pipe. Going back, that clamp appears to be original. Uh, really just untouched down here. Uh, Got the red oxide paint showing through on this uh, differential. And it should have a tag. There is the tag right there, 3.00. If it was a locking rear end, there would be the letter L right there. And it does not have the coveted L. I want to show this muffler. I'm going to replace this. I actually have an NOS one I'm putting on here. But uh, this is the transverse system. And even though it's an A code, meaning 4 barrel, 289, you got single exhaust. There was no dual exhaust option on a small block. And almost everybody has changed over to once these mufflers go bad, they're like, ah, why bother? Let's get a dual exhaust system on there. So I haven't seen an original untouched system. And this is actually, uh, this muffler has been replaced once before because you rarely get more than 40,000 miles out of it. But these are the original mounts. And see how that's white there? That, mo that uh, was from a white wall from an old 50s Buick or something. They, they cut the side walls out of old tires and sometimes they were white. So kind of fun to see a, a white piece there. When you buy a NOS one like I did for this car, um, they don't come with a Cougar number. They were a generic number. Uh, the Cougar number probably would have said something like C7WA dash da 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 da. Well, the, the generic uh, NOS ones that you buy, service replacement ones, have like a D0ZZ number. Still the same muffler, just it was more of a one-size-fits-all. Notice we're missing the little flapper here. It's supposed to be a little rubber uh, 
valve, we'll say, so water could go out, but mice couldn't grow, crawl in. It is in place on this side, hard as a rock, probably uh, plugged up, but good to see that original piece there. Uh, zero, zero rust ever. Look, look close for uh, missing underlayment here where they've maybe, there's collision work, look for any welding, and yes, this sloppy uh, underlayment on here is the way it's supposed to be, but just take some time with a light and just stare at everything under here. You're looking for wrinkles, anything out of place. Anything that doesn't look right probably isn't right. Looks like it may in fact be the original uh, uh, valence. I don't see any stenciled on uh, part number. Uh, it's not red oxide underneath there. And he here's how you find if the valence was ever damaged. I run my fingers along like this and right here I feel filler. This is the only filler I've found in the car and it's right here. So it had a dent that was pretty much just right here. It's not up here. But you just run your fingers like this all the way down looking for filler. Okay, look for corrosion here. Actually get an awl or a screwdriver and start pushing in spots. This one's perfect of course. Uh, also look for um, stickers on here. The originals never had service replacement part little uh, peel and sticks on them. That, that, that shows a collision. These show no, no stickers or anything. This is original, this little piece of rubber here that keeps your wire from ever contacting metal. Anti-vibration piece there. Um, not much to see here. It's just pretty much perfect. No wrinkles, no uh, corrosion. Uh, everything looks like it was the day it left the factory pretty much. This is a later model as all XR7s were. Remember um, XR7s are somewhat rare for 67 and then they didn't come out until halfway through the model year. So the fuel line on this car runs like a 6.8 down the rocker here. If this was an early car you'd see it running down the tranny tunnel. And that, when you order a brake line that's something we'll ask you. Uh, the brake line always runs down the tranny tunnel early or late, but because the fuel line ran with it, it changed the configuration a little bit. So just keep that in mind when you're ordering parts. Um, you need to know if you got early or late when it comes to things like this. Notice when they painted this car, like most, they couldn't get their gun down and do an adequate job. Well, that's okay because from the factory, this area is supposed to be painted black. And believe it or not, the more sloppy you are, the more correct you are. So uh, somebody wants to do some detailing on this in the future, they're going to go down here and just make all this look black. Okay, I want to show you around the interior of a really original 67 XR7. Show you some little differences between 6.7 and 6.8. Notice the knobs on the radio are squared off. Also, that's a one year only 8 track. Every year they made a little bit of change to them. Um, toggle tips, these are oftentimes broken. And keep in mind if the switch itself is faulty, uh, it messes with your um, interior lights and stuff. So if you're wondering why your, your opera lights and uh, lights below aren't coming on when they're supposed to be, look at these as your culprit. Uh, 67, they had three styles of mirror, and this is uh, the later one. Notice it's round like a 68 and 9. Uh, the early ones were very square, and of course you had two different types of uh, flip lever there. Uh, also, uh, take note of this weird color of headliner. Um, they didn't do the dark ivy gold in here, and I don't know why they use the word gold in here. Do you see any gold in there? I guess you see little strains of lighter green. But so they put a really light ivy uh, headliner in here. A lot of people think that's weird, but that is in fact correct. Uh, what else can I show you that is unique to a 6.7? The instrument cluster. Notice how that is squared off along there. And notice that that goes down deep in 6.8. They ended it here and gave a more rounded look, which is odd because there was only one type of bezel on the passenger side, and that's the squared off style. So if you get a 6.8, you'll notice a little difference in contour, the plastic there. Uh, don't know why they made that funny little change. Air conditioning vents in 6.7, they were one piece. 
Oftentimes they're pitted. Uh, this is a little bit pitted. We do have reproductions that are very nice. Uh, we got the 6-7 window cranks that are also known for pitting. I see a little bit of pitting there. But these are inexpensive and the reproductions are good. Also, you'll notice that uh, these have the original door handles. You can know they're original because most, there's four different makers on these handles, and most of them are indexed wrong. Some go slightly up, some go slightly down. We are one of the few people that carry the corrected version that's uh, horizontal like they're supposed to. Notice also the one year only 67 map pocket. Uh, has that little floral design in 68 they did the walking cat this is also unique to 67 baseball bat design here here's something else i always look for on these cars you know you'll see uh, seats that are some some form of tired that's just half the story reach under here and look for yellow powdery foam now i know i'm not going to find any on this seat because i paid the 200 dollars to have my upholsterer put new foam in there but look at this seat. You're thinking, oh, this is perfect. I won't have to do anything to this one. Yes, it's a nice serviceable, uh, usable, original leather seat. But reach underneath, and I'll bet, since I did not, yes. Look at that. We got orange foam. And if I reach up and touch, you probably get more foam. It's not as bad as some, but, but know that uh, after 50 years, the foam gets dry the burlap splits and you get a mess so uh, moving on to the console this is a very rare unique thing every one of these handles is cracked somewhere they just have to because the plastic shrinks over the time so luckily this one split mostly on the back side a lot of them will split right along the front there and it's really unsightly so this is also a color that's not reproduced and also notice it's one year only. See the sharp designs on here? 68 and above had very rounded corners. So that's a very valuable uh, deluxe T-shifter handle in green, which the Mustang never had green. So this is a Cougar only, 67 only, XR7 only shift handle. So that's, that's a neat piece and very hard to find if you're missing it. We've got the deluxe belts that resemble 6.8s, but are... Um, much much more hard to find so that's one year only for cougar with the metal and it's always nice to see them in this kind of condition console look close for cracks all along here uh, especially where they put the screws in oftentimes they over tighten them and break that area completely out also look for shrinkage in these pads you can see where this one you know might be curling up just a little bit on the edges but notice how tight it is against there. Some of them delaminate from the metal so bad that they're out a half inch. That's a very hard piece to find there. And also I want to draw your attention to the fact in 6.7, all your fasteners were chrome. So the console screws were bright. The, uh, if you look here, it might be dull now, but these are all bright. Uh, back here, holding uh, the console in here, that's a bright piece. Uh, all, all around, those are bright. And 6.8, they, they did not do bright finish on those. Uh, console, these are oftentimes pitted, nasty. We got just the starting of some little pits there. So that's a nice piece. The opera lights, you can tell on these that these are reproductions, how beautiful white these are. These are reproductions that I put in. The originals had some pitting around there. And I just like to have those looking fresh. These are usually pitted too, so I put on reproductions of these. Same with the rear handles. The rear handles don't get used as much, so they always get pitted. So I put, uh, put uh, a reproduction on there. Also know that uh, the original stickers versus the reproduction on these, the originals were placed on the inside. If you run your finger on the outside and you feel it, you know that's a reproduction. Also, it's extremely nice looking, so that, that's a tell that it's a reproduction. Cougar floor mats. If you look at the back of these, these are uh, reproductions we had made. And Scott Drake. So these are not originals. They're, they're very close. They're very nice. But uh, they are reproductions. 
So if you find an original pair that are this nice, where the Cougar definition is all nice, especially on the driver's side, that's a very valuable pair of floor mats, uh, you know, worth probably about $300. Oftentimes you'll see this handle cracked or broken here. No big deal. That's a $10 fix. The reproductions are very nice. Uh, I'll show you here. This needs a new cable. This has the back broke off. So the only way to get this to work is to hold the back housing. So that's not too expensive of a fix. Of course, the ones we sell are updated and have the metal housing like the service replacements. So uh, anyway, just know that all these little things add up and you probably don't want to dismiss them. You probably want to go through on a car like this with your clipboard and just keep going and going and going. Every knob, every missing item, everything that's not correct. Then go to our website, fill out a cart and present the wish list, your cart to the uh, owner and say, hey, did you know all these things need, need done? I put $2,000 worth of parts into this car. It happens quick. And this was a nice car. One of the first things I always do is take off the dull, dinged up aluminum sill plates, even on original cars like this, and put the stainless ones on. They're a little too shiny, but uh, look so much better than 50 year old ones. And the aluminum reproductions are just too soft. They dent the first time you put your hand here. So awesome upgrade there. Leather seats, this one needs at least the bottom replaced. And uh, you can get lucky on these once in a while. If you go to classiccougarcommunity.com or other sites, you'll find people parting these out. And if you can find yourself a passenger side seat, the frames aren't ambidextrous, but the covers themselves are. Notice like 6.8, there's no uh, lever here with, to put a hole in your seat. So if you can find a good passenger seat from a parts car, you can fix this. In conclusion, I'm probably not the first person to say this. In fact, I know I'm not, but you're better off to overpay on a car you really like than to get a full-on project for free sometimes, if being very complete and original is your goal. And even if you're not wanting complete and original, gosh, a, a reproduction dash pad for these is hundreds of dollars. Think if you had to replace all the chrome and all the interior and do a paint job, this car, say you did overpay and spent $30,000 on it. Watch your friend who, who gets the project for free out of a field and watch what he goes through over the next 10 years and see who's further ahead. So I hope this video gives you just that much more education and confidence in picking out the right Cougar for yourself.